I'm Todd Kelly from Kelly Racing. Welcome to the second episode of our Road to Mustang series. To start with, we're going to talk about the cylinder heads for our new engine. This is quite a successful head, a lot of history in racing all over the world. It's the Ford D3 cylinder head. This is the only head that has been approved to be used in supercars on the Ford engine. So it's been in um, NASCAR, in drag racing, in speedway, uh, ski race boats, anything you can think of, they've made a version of this head to, to suit them. It's probably capable of up to 200 horsepower more than what our engine will make in other categories. And you can buy these cylinder heads ready to bolt on an engine, a, a quite a generic um, cylinder head from all different suppliers around the planet given they've been around so long but there's nothing really around that we can buy that perfectly suits what our requirements are so you can see here this cylinder head is as raw as you could possibly get so there's no internal machining done all of the chambers are raw castings it's just basically being cubed so machined around the outside and also around where the rocker stand and the valve spring bases go so all the ports are just the raw casting and as i said so is the chamber so there's a lot of decisions to be made in the design of our own cylinder head and until we get all of that locked away we can't go and order design and order pistons uh, design our exhaust system or start any of the design work on our inlet manifold because it's all dependent on where we end up with in the cylinder head so probably the first thing to look at is the piston and you really need a good solid design uh, in your piston and also be on minimum weight so how you go about the chamber and your valve positions which there's some slight freedoms in where you can put these valves and also the height of your chamber uh, really dictates what this design ends up being so 10 to 1 compression ratio is what we need and as an example if you choose too big a valve to start your design process you can see here in, in the edge of the piston how close that valve pocket is to the edge of the piston. So that's a consideration. And also the height of the valve seat and the chamber um, really dictates how deep that is. So if you start getting too big and, uh, and too deep in that valve pocket, you can see how it can really affect where you put this top ring. And again, there's rules and limits on all of these things. And what we aim to do is shuffle everything around in the head to try and maximize exactly where these things end up so it's the best possible design principle so in general you want that nice and light on minimum weight the strongest design and you want to get those rings as high up in the piston and the pin as well as you can and you know really good design underneath so you'd be amazed how much load actually goes through trying to bend these pistons around and we want maximum reliability and performance out of the piston so once we've worked out our valve angles and our chamber, exactly how many cc's we want in the chamber and the piston, we can then go and complete that design and order the pistons. From there we go into the inlet and exhaust port once the chamber's complete. And again, that's um, dictated largely by the rules. We've got an example here of the window that we can have our port positioned on, on the inlet manifold face. But more importantly, you don't want to stuff this one up, is um, the constraints you've actually got in this D3 head. So there's water in this cylinder head to keep it cool. And it comes very close to where you would end up with the internal surface of your port. So you can see behind me on the screen, that's an example of our um, internal surface of the inlet port and the exhaust port. So you need to be careful that that design and the positioning of that design doesn't break through into any of the internal water jackets. Sounds pretty scary, but you can get within two millimeters wall thickness of your port to water jacket. And once you've got all of those things optimized for what our engine requires, we can then go ahead and design the exhaust system in the manifold. So that process has been done. Manifold's actually getting machined at the moment. And our cylinder heads are probably only a week away from landing in the country so we can have a good look at them and start to assemble them. So now you all understand a little bit of the background of what goes into the design of a cylinder head from a bare casting. The guys and girls down in the machine shop have been pretty busy over the last few weeks and have started to release a lot of those parts that were initially dictated by the head. The inlet manifold, the pistons have been ordered and some of those parts are actually getting made in the machine shop. So let's go and have a look.
So we're here to check out what's going on in the machine shop and as you can see, it's only really the start of the machining phase. Everything's been drawn and released now into here and it turns up in big blocks of aluminium or steel or whatever the part's made out of. This is actually going to be a Mustang door hinge, believe it or not. Uh, bell housing, you saw in the last video that first stage of the bell housing that mates onto the block. That's what that part is. A few covers for the sump. The actual sump materials here and has had some initial machine work done. Only four bolt holes at the moment and that's just to fix it onto the plate in the mill so that they can machine all the internals out. That's about 87 kilos worth of aluminium there so the actual sump when it's finished will be quite a bit lighter than that, probably less than 10 kilos. So a lot of machining to be done. Over here we have a lot of the parts that Nikki has drawn up the front. So Nikki was in charge of all of the pulley system and the, the drives for the oil pump, water pump and alternator. These are the little pins that hold the, the door onto the hinge. So that's looking good. We've got enough parts there to make six engines at least for uh, Adelaide. So the sump, as you saw on the pallet, there's one in the machine here. So from that point, there's a good two weeks worth of programming once it's been CAD drawn. So the machine shop crew here need to program all the tool paths and speeds and everything and how the machine grabs different things and actually goes about machining that part. So that all has to be manually programmed and then it can uh, uh, start getting machined. So it'll be two or three weeks to go from that point to actually having something we can bolt on an engine. And the last thing the crew's been working on here are all the manifold bases. So We've got two different specs here. One, you may remember the engine we got off Jimmy Stone as our test engine. So that cylinder head is different to the one that we've designed and had machined. So this here is a test piece. This is the part that bolts onto the cylinder head face. You can see it's a little bit rude, not, not the nicest looking part, but we need to make it cheap and simple because it'll only do maybe one or two dyno runs and then this won't get used again. So the actual part for our cylinder heads is here. So you can see a lot more work has gone into the detail of this. It's a lot lighter. Uh, we've had to sign off on this part and we can adjust everything above that when we um, get our cylinder head on. But the point of the, the test piece is we can then verify the throttle body, the whole inlet manifold, the injector position, and get all of that testing done on the SBR engine as well as the exhaust system so then everything is in the window and it's just a matter of fine tuning when we actually get our heads and our parts on. Not long until we'll actually have all the bits here to assemble our own inlet manifold. So pretty cool stuff and I can't wait to actually fire this stuff up on the dyno. Ben here from the head fabby here at Cali Racing. Um, the last couple of weeks been pretty uh, full on. We've uh, got a fair bit done. So since the last time we were here, we've uh, we've been all guns blazing on the chassis here. So we've got all the uh, side intrusions done on both sides. Um, floors all welded. Basically, the cage is pretty much finished. There's a, a few gussets and uh, whatnot that need to be welded in, um, which we sort of just tickle along with as we go. Um, we've got head going flat stick with, uh, with just final welding of the A-pillar um, panels so we can get the, the front all on. So it's, uh, it's coming along nicely and uh, yeah, we'll, we should see uh, final panels and off the jig in hopefully a week or so. Uh, just starting to fit the C and B-pillar as well as the parcel shelf for Mustangs. So this is all OE parts um, that have come to us from um, DGR Team Penske. They've, uh, they've rough cut and marked out for us. So we've got a bit of an idea on 
where everything goes and then from there we just sort of fine tune and trim. Um, as you can see in the rear with the uh, parcel shelf section we've got all the jigs from uh, machine shop so that all bolts together, everything clips on um, really well so that gives us a really good idea on where everything starts to fit so as we go through we can sort of get everything where it's got to go. So here you can see the top part of the C pillar coming together, or C to B I suppose. Um, sort of starts to give us the shape of the, uh, of the Mustang itself. So as you can see here, we've got the uh, A pillar uh, welded in now. It's uh, pretty much locked in for uh, the final time started on the uh, parcel shelf. Once, we're, once we've got this kind of tacked together, we'll, the rest of the side in, we'll, uh, we'll fit a quarter and make sure everything's, everything's in the right spot. And uh, once we know we're good, we'll uh, weld up and off the jig, send it to the paint shop. Thanks for watching, I hope you enjoyed the episode. Make sure you subscribe to our YouTube channel. The next few episodes, this whole project is gonna really start to come together.